Final day of practice here at Lake Sam Rayburn. It's winding down. Uh, we've interviewed some of the veterans already today that came in a little early. You know, they're all relaxed, like, yeah, yeah, we got it made. Some of the rookies on tour, Dustin Grice, yes, coming sir. in late, pushing it to the last minute, every bit of daylight, trying to make it count. That's what it takes out here on the FLW Tour to get it done. And, Dustin, I've heard a lot of good things about you this week. Phil Mark singing your praises, Jim Tut. Uh, you're a young guy out here on tour, and you were waiting for it to come to Sam Rayburn, and here we are. What do you think? I think it's going to be a great tournament. Um, it means a lot to me to hear those guys say that about me. It's a big confidence booster being a rookie. Um, I know this lake really well. Um, right now it is in an off, kind of a funk is what I'd like to call it basically. Everybody's been saying that for the most part. Um, we're kind of in between stages. There was a big spawn a few weeks ago. I think Phil mentioned that. Some guys have already mentioned that. But um, I still believe it's going to take high 70s, low 80s for somebody to win this tournament, um, which is pretty good. Um, to make the top 20 cut, I believe it's going to take a hard 28 to 30 pounds. and. Uh, it's going to be a good tournament. Even though the lake's in a funk, it's still Sam Rayburn, and there's still potential for a 28 to 30 pound bag any day with these guys. I mean, this, these are the best in the world, so there's potential for a big bag. Are you a sight fishing guy, or are you burn it up down the bank, wind and grind? You like to fish more offshore? Kind of tell me what you what you like to do on this place. I will do everything here. <laughs> I will mix it up. The right now, the way the lake's fishing, I'm going. I mean, I have a full variety of stuff. Okay. Um, I have no specialty, no strength, other than just I will grind out, do whatever I got to do to get the biggest five I can catch. And the way the lake's fishing right now, it's kind of, fortunately, it's, I've been having to mix it up, to be honest with you, to catch them. So, I mean, I've, it's one here, one there, so. That's what, that's what I was going to ask. Is this going to be a place we were talking to Yellis a while back ago? He said that this is usually the kind of place you get in one area and you grind and you grind. But um, some guys are saying you might have to utilize more than one place and a lot of a lot of real estate, a fish here, five miles away, another fish. Yeah. I mean, is that kind of the game plan that you can run here? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, simply because of the way the lake is in a funk, you can go into one area and get four or five bites and – you'll go another 500 yards. I mean, you can go a mile more and not get another bite, run five miles down the lake and get a couple more bites. So they're pretty sporadic. The water temperature is varying all over the place. I mean, that's- we have, Like what? Like in some areas I'm finding, you know, 65 at the end of the day. And then in other areas I'm finding 59. It's, it's kind of strange, almost like, um, of course we got a lot of shade with the pine trees, the pollens covering the water. I mean, it's it's hard to see the fish, and um, the lake is off, but it's still going to be a good tournament. Sounds good. The I'm hearing a lot about watercolor being dingy. What's causing that? I think a lot of it's due. The lake came up six inches last week when we had that big rain. Okay. I finally stabled off, I guess, about three days ago. That, and we've had some pretty strong winds and the pollen. I mean, that's the, two, that's the three things. But the, mainly is it rose six inches. That's the biggest deal, and there's a lot of runoff in the back of the creeks. Do you like the water level that you see right now? It doesn't really matter to me. Okay. Um, I fished it at all, of, all different levels. Um, it makes it easier to run around, but I would like to see it a little bit lower, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it really doesn't matter. It makes no difference to me. Are these fish very moonal uh, affected here? Uh, you know, we've had a big warm up all day. It's been last two days been really gorgeous. You, you would think the water temperature's getting right, but a lot of some lakes, especially in Florida, if the moon's not right and we're kind of between moons, that big wave won't happen. Is, is I mean, are they moonal fish here? Yeah, yes, they are. And it, you know, we just came from Toledo Bend and it was unbelievable sight fishing. And I thought it, coming straight over here, and I know this lake great. I fish here forever and I thought coming here that's what it was going to be while well, I launched my boat Sunday it was like a whole nother world which I should have known better because they are two different beasts I mean there's no doubt about it but yes they are the moon will have an effect on them and we're in between phases um, there was a real good spawn two and three weeks ago and I think a lot of the big females have already spawned but there will be another wave come in I, I mean I'm seeing some males some small males on beds and uh, um, but yes they are very affected by the moon Sounds good. You're hearing it right here from Dustin Grice. We we saved him a little bit of daylight. He still wants to go out there and check a couple spots. I so uh, we're gonna we're gonna let him do that on his way back home.